Okay, let's talk about the Pear Pro Assessment. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the math that's going to be on the Pear Pro. Now, because you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take the Pear Pro Assessment. And uh, as you probably already know, Pear Pro stands for Pear Professional, which is also um, known as a teacher's assistant. So that is fantastic. So I want to thank you for uh, you know serving. Uh, you know, in education, we definitely need as many great people in the classroom these days for sure. But uh, before you be, you could become a paraprofessional or a teacher's assistant, you're going to have to get through the certification exam and the math section. And uh, what I have for you in this particular uh, video is a practice problem that you should be able to handle without too much difficulty if you're fully prepared for the math that you're going to see on the parapro exam. So here's the problem. And uh, you can see here, I'd like you uh, not to use a calculator. So if you want to pause uh, the video and work on this, it should take you a minute or two to do this. And you can put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the correct answer here in just one second. Then I'm going to fully explain this problem step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades, so I certainly understand what it's like to take certification exams. But uh, over those years, I've constructed uh, many math courses to include a pair pro math test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. You might uh, be surprised that you're going to have to know a good amount of high school level math to pass the pair pro math section. Okay, There's a decent amount of algebra and geometry. I wouldn't say uh, advanced algebra, but definitely algebra and geometry uh, amongst other topics on the pair pro. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get into this problem. So here it is. Again, if you want to pause the video and work on this, or if you just want to see the solution and see the, uh, you know, how I do this step by step, that's fine. But let's go ahead and see the answer. And uh, the answer to this, well, let me just go ahead and read the problem. So we have bracket parenthesis one half minus three fourths uh, parentheses minus five uh, end bracket divided by parenthesis one minus seven and parenthesis. So what is this all equal to? Well, if you did this correct, the answer is seven eighths. Okay, so if you got this right, that is fantastic. Uh, you know, just use this as feedback, right? And it's certainly by no means, you know, a kind of verification that you're totally ready for the pair pro. But, you know, it's, it's definitely a good start. Uh, if you didn't get this right, definitely don't panic. Just make note of like, okay, I got to work on, you know, uh, uh, order of operations, etc. I'm going to explain this right now. But here's the deal. Before you go into taking the pair pro, whether you think you have strong or weak math skills, you need to study and do a ton of of practice problems. You don't want to take a chance on failing the exam. You want to go in and pass the exam the first time. Uh, so you want to learn math the best as, uh, as you can, not only for the exam, but it's also going to help you uh, when you become a teacher's assistant. But let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. So let's just uh, quickly look at what's going on here in terms of what we need to know to solve this problem. Well, the first thing we need to keep in mind is this little acronym right here. Uh, PEMDAS, which is a uh, way for us to kind of know which operations, mathematical operations to do first. This is related to a topic uh, that you definitely need to know called the order, uh, the order of operations, okay, the order of operations. So this is a huge topic in basic math, and this PEMDAS stands for uh, parentheses, E stands for exponent or powers. So you're going to do everything inside parentheses, and then we're going to do powers, and then multiplication, division, and then addition and subtraction from left to right. You'll kind of see this more in action. And this is just a cursory explanation of this. Uh, you really need full instruction on this if you're not quite sure what, you know, what I'm talking about. But uh, this is definitely one thing that you need to understand in order to do this problem, okay? Because we have different mathematical operators. We have subtraction and division uh, kind of going on here. So, you know, what do we need to do? Well, I'll explain this here in a second. Uh, we also need to understand basic number operations, right? Uh, simply, you know, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing uh, numbers. Uh, we're going to need to know something about positive and negative number rules, right? So how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide positive and negative numbers. And then obviously we're de uh, we are dealing with fractions, so you're going to need to understand fractions. 
Okay, so these are kind of the skill sets that hopefully you have. And if you don't, I could teach you all this stuff in my course. But let's go ahead and get into the problem now. So the first thing we want to do is use this uh, PEMDAS acronym. Okay, let me write this up here, P-E-M-D-A-S. And we're going to go to this P. Now, this stands for parentheses or grouping symbols. So these little brackets right here are also uh, would be considered uh, parentheses. And so anytime, in, you know, when we're thinking about this PEMDAS, we're talking about uh, parentheses. These are brackets or grouping symbols. So are these, and so are these, these little squiggly brackets. So we're, we're going to locate uh, parentheses, right? So here's uh, parentheses. So we can kind of do this first, okay? We could do this first. Now this is one big parenthesis, right? This big bracket. So what do we do? Well, uh, when you see a large, you know, like something, uh, 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 brackets on the outside of um, some parentheses that are on the inside, you'll always go to the innermost parentheses. That's where you start. Okay. Now here, this is outside of this bracket, so we can do this as well. Okay. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and start here. So we have one half minus three fourths. So one half is the same thing as the fraction two fourths. Okay, so if I reduce the fraction 2 or 4, that would be the fraction 1 half, and we're going to subtract 3 fourths away from that. Okay, now why did I write this as 2 fourths? Well, we need to have the same denominator, 4. Okay, now fractions is extremely important, and I'm certainly not uh, kind of giving you a full lesson here. I'm just kind of going over this, but uh, if you don't uh, understand fractions, again, I teach all this stuff in my course. So whether it's my course or something else, you absolutely got to understand fractions uh, to be ready for the pair pro. Okay, so we have two fourths minus three fourths. So when you have two fractions, you're trying to add or subtract them, and they have the same denominator, i.e. the lowest common denominator. So all we need to do here is write that one denominator and actually do this uh, subtraction. So we're going to subtract the respective numerators. So that's two minus three. So that's what we have right here. So two minus three over four. Two minus three is negative one. Okay, so two minus three or two plus negative three is negative one over uh, four. So negative one fourth. Okay, so that's what this is equal to right here. And let's go ahead and clean this up. So we have one minus seven. That's the same thing as one plus negative seven, which of course is negative six. All right, so here you're dealing with fractions and positive negative numbers. So again, skills that you know uh, you need to understand okay so this right here is a negative six and this is a negative one fourth so let's go ahead and write the problem as such all right so just to kind of uh, keep track of what's going on we just did this part of the problem and we got negative one fourth and we just did this right here and we got negative six so what you want to be doing is you want to write each step you know, that you take one or two steps at most and then, you know, take a, uh, write another step and then write another step. You're basically telling a story. Okay, so over here, you know, once we kind of clean this up, now we want to take a look at this situation. And uh, if you notice, we still have our big brackets here. And I'm looking inside. I'm like, okay, is there anything else to do? Well, there's these parentheses, but there's nothing to do. It's just a number. So what I want to do is this right here. Okay. So negative one fourth minus five. That's what we're going to figure out. So negative one fourth minus five. So how can I uh, fix this up? Well, you can see these uh, two fractions have different denominators. Okay. The LCD or the lowest common denominator is actually four. So I can change this fraction here to have a denominator of uh, four by multiplying the denominator by four. But if I do that, I also got to multiply the numerator by four. So five times four is 20 and four times one, of course, is four. And I have my negative one fourth right here. Okay. So here's a negative one fourth minus this 20 over four, which is a five over one. Okay. So again, you know, I'm just quickly explaining this. Uh, certainly, uh, if you don't understand fractions, this is really not enough, but um, hopefully you're understanding what's going on. Okay, so now again, we're uh, subtracting fractions. The denominators uh, are the same, four. So what we need to do is subtract the numerators. So that's negative one plus a negative 20. So negative one plus a negative 20 is negative 21 over four. Okay, so uh, so far, if you're surprised that there's you know this amount of work, involved well you know again uh you know math problem you just never know how many steps are involved and the key 
is not to try to do too many steps at once. Just one, uh, no more than two, and just, you know, uh, focus on these little sub problems or within the problem. Okay, so we just did this, and we figured out that it's negative 21 over 4. All right, so let's continue on now. All right, so we just figured this out, and it's negative 21 over 4. And now uh, we have these brackets, but inside we just got one answer. So we're just going to write this as negative 21 over 4 divided by uh, this negative 6. So we're almost done. So now we need to understand how to divide fractions. All right, so negative 21 over 4 divided by negative 6. But let's write this as a fraction. We'll write that as negative 6 over 1. Anytime you uh, want to write a number as a fraction, just put it over 1. So if I have 6, I'm like, ah, I want to see it as a fraction. Put it over 1. 6 is now the numerator, and 1 is the denominator, because 6 divided by 1, of course, is 6. Okay, so how do we divide fractions? Well, this is pretty easy. What, we, what we're going to do is change this uh, into a multiplication problem. Okay, so we don't really kind of divide fractions per se. What we're going to do is change this problem into multiplication. The way we're going to do that is the fraction to the right of the division symbol. In this case, it's negative 6 over 1. We're going to flip it upside down, okay? So that's negative 1 over 6, okay? So we're going to flip this one upside down, and when we do that, this division can now become multiplication, okay? So you see how that works? All right, so now that we have a multiplication problem, uh, this is pretty easy. So how do we multiply fractions? We just simply multiply the numerators, uh, so negative 1 times, uh, I'm sorry, negative 21 times negative 1 is a positive 21, and 4 times 6, which is uh, multiplying across, is 24. So our answer is 21 over 4. However, when we're dealing with fractions, you always want to make sure that you fully simplify your answer, i.e. reduce it. So here you can see that 3 goes into 21 7 times, and 3 goes into 24 8 times. So our final answer is 7 8. Okay, so if you got this right, again, that's very good. If you didn't, you know, it's possible that you maybe just didn't understand one part of this problem. But either way, you know, uh, what you need to do is practice math. You certainly don't want to get discouraged. I'm telling you right now, irrespective of your math background, even if you failed math, you struggle with math, you've been away from math for years, you can learn this stuff. Okay, absolutely. But you're going to have to give yourself enough time and you're going to have to build up your math skill sets. Again, there is a decent amount of math on the Parapro uh, math uh, section. So, um, you know, my final uh, piece of advice for you is to overstudy, overprepare. Okay, and hopefully I can help you out with that. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the Parapro assessment. Thank you for your time and have a great day.